I'm here with James McClellan, a master's student working with Dr. Renee Threlfall on production, pest management, and post-harvest quality of hops in Arkansas. James and I are going to discuss a few things today about pest management hops grown here in Arkansas, and we hope to provide a framework for management that will help you succeed in producing hops within the state. Specifically, we will cover disease management and prevention, how and where to scout for insects, and we'll go into a bit more depth for the major pests that we've observed so far. Hops in Arkansas are at a high risk of disease development due to our hot and humid growing conditions throughout the summer. Downy mildew and powdery mildew are generally going to be our primary concern when we're thinking about Arkansas hop production. Last year we observed a lot of downy mildew at multiple locations, especially some of the grower locations, and it is clear that Arkansas growers need to focus on preventing this disease. That needs to be the main focus of your disease uh, management program. Downy mildew and other diseases should be managed through cultural practice such as early bind pruning and by using a fungicide prevention program with applications around 10 to 14 days depending on whether or not you had rainfall in that period. We currently use a rotation of Pristine and Aliette on 10-day intervals. Uh, we use 14 days the year, first year and still observe significant downy mildew issues likely because of a lot of the rain earlier in the year. This year we haven't observed many diseases related issues with the spray schedule although it is starting to crop up now which is potentially because of just the differences in environmental conditions. Organic growers should rely on sulfur in their management plans. Hops need to be scouted every week for insects, diseases, and any nutrient deficiencies. When scouting, it's a good idea to scan the yard for discolored plants, when this will generally give you a good idea if you have a large nutrient or disease issue popping up. When scouting for insects and diseases symptomology, always keep in mind where you've had historical issues with uh, any of these problems. This is where you're likely going to see some of the issues each year. Hotspots often occur on the field edges or where the yard borders areas with many alternate hosts like tree lines and ditch banks. Outside of your hotspots, you also need to walk down a few of the rows within the yard to scout for issues. With insect or disease scouting, we usually recommend walking a W or a V pattern and checking plants along the way. This is ideal because insects and diseases are often clumped up in certain areas and you can miss them easily if you don't check a representative area. Scout your hops at least once a week and try not to go down the same rows each time. It's a good practice to check back on hotspots to make sure your pesticide applications are working properly. But always try to cover new areas each week so significant issues aren't missed throughout the season. Hop scouting usually consists of visual observations uh, such as the leaves and the stems. It's important to look at the plant at three different heights, usually at the bottom of the vines, around the middle uh, eye level, and then towards the top of the vines. Insect problems can occur at all three of these levels, so make sure you closely observe the leaves using a handheld lens. Check the underside and the top of the leaves for aphids, spider mites, and potato leafhoppers. Close observation of a few leaves on each plant should be, well, uh, should be good enough. Over the last two years in Arkansas, we've observed caterpillar pests and mites to be the most serious issues when thinking about insects. We usually see aphids early on after plants begin to climb the wires, but we really just haven't observed damaging levels here or any of the grower collaborator issues or areas. Generally, you get to bad problems when you get about five aphids per leaf. Caterpillars usually begin to show up around the beginning of May and usually don't let up until late into the summer. We're still dealing with them now here in August. Spider mites were a large issue last year because of broad spectrum insecticide use on our caterpillar pests, but this year we swapped to using BT, which protects our natural enemy complex. This has kept mites at bay for the most part, but we are starting to see them get worse now with a favorable hot and dry environment. If you are finding around five mites per leaf, it is going to be time to apply a miticide. And in general, this is around the time this last year that we started seeing them. Let's now look at some things that we've observed throughout the year in the hops yard and show the importance of scouting different areas of the plant. When thinking about managing insect species or pest species in hops, Scouting is always going to be a critical step in being able to manage with appropriate chemicals without making other pest uh, issues worse. So specifically in hops, what we're really thinking about are spider mites being one of the most serious pests that we get. But a lot of times those are flared by chemicals that we use to control other pests. And so it's good or very important that we get out and try to find these insects quickly so we can use some of the easier chemicals or lighter chemicals like BT to control them at a, a smaller stage. And so whenever you're thinking about scouting for hops, just realize that this is a plant that is, um, here we have them at 12 foot, but realize that you can go have them up to 16 or 20 foot. And so we have really different parts of the canopy that you need to focus on. So you may go look at your hops, you know, get up to about eye level, not see too much going on. Um, and then you may go 
to where you actually see a lot higher on the plant, like we're seeing over here, and you can see that you have an issue brewing much higher up. And so right here we have yellow stripe cat or yellow stripe army worms that are feeding about 10 foot up on the plant. And so what this is showing that is that it's very important that you actually look at all three stages. And so when you're scouting for hops, there's a couple different things you want to look at. And so what I first want to show you here is that we have a lot of old damage. And so this is a plant that's very vigorous and growing. And so you'll, you'll, when you go look at it, you'll find a lot of damage that exists. And so this actually right here is feeding that was from earlier infestations of, uh, this right here looks like to be potentially a Japanese beetle. But we have a lot of feeding here that's from old caterpillars and things like that. And so whenever you see some of this feeding, you want to look around, look underneath the leaves themselves, try to make sure that there's not anything around there because just because you're seeing holes in the leaves doesn't mean that there's actually anything there feeding on it at that time. So in this case, it's hard to find anything, but keep looking around and what you'll see is that you can find evidence of a brewing infestation or issue. So right here, what we have is some armyworm eggs. And so it's not as exactly easy to tell all the time what armyworm it is. This right here is most likely going to be yellow stripe armyworm. And what this is showing you is that, hey, I have armyworms out here laying eggs. These are potentially going to hatch here in a couple of days, especially because of the color. These are already black in coloration, which means they're just about to hatch. It looks like maybe a few of them already have started to hatch. And this is a prime time to go ahead and spray an insecticide to control them. Um, what I showed you a second ago, let's walk back over here to this other plant. These army worms that have been hatched for a few days and are already beginning to uh, feed a lot. These are also very easy to control. And you can find evidence of their damage all around. This is some of the older damage that we sprayed for already. Um, but these are going to be a, a, a good time to control them with a softer product like BT, where you're able to get um, effective control without flaring any of them. Mites are probably the biggest pest, the more serious pest that we're going to deal with here in hops, especially here in Arkansas. And so when I say mites, we're talking about is the two spotted spider mite, which is a very widely known pestiferous mite. Um, if you grow anything from tomatoes to uh, even into some of your blackberries, um, but especially a lot of our vegetable crops, um, then you know that you've probably dealt with mites in the past. So just like with um, the other pests that we're talking about, you want to you know, think about your whole hops yard. You want to be constantly looking throughout the hops yard for things and you want to look at three different levels, right? Um, we've seen hot or mites start up in hops nor, more towards the top um, of the canopy and then become an issue even spreading over and then down. They can hitch a ride um, on other um, insects moving around. So it's important to take a good look, you know, and I've walked this whole row of hops we have here at Clarksville. Just haven't seen much, but if I get down to one end, which is often the case with mites, what you'll see is that you can find a spot kind of where they're popping up. Um, it usually happens around the edge or just in spots that are more dry a lot of times. And so mites actually are going to come up from the soil or from a lot of the weedy hosts that are around and they can spread them up to the plants. And so what we're seeing here is that we do have what could be a little bit of mite damage. So a lot of times what you're looking for is a little bit of almost burning on the leaves. Um, this can also be a couple different things, but if you ever want to make sure that it's mites, turn your leaf over. And so the first thing that you're going to notice here is that there's a lot of webbing on that leaf. You see all the webbing there? That is a great indicator of mites. And so if I look closely here, I can see little mites running around. So this tells me I have an active mite population here. Um, and so a lot of these leaves with the damage, yeah, see, we're getting a lot of the same thing. So you can see the webbing kind of sticking off of that plant or off the leaf on the bottom. And that's going to be a good indicator that there's mites there. If you look closely, you can actually see some predatory species on those mites, which means we've done a good job of maintaining our predator, predator complex out here. But on this one plant, you know, we're actually starting to get a pretty heavy load of mites, which indicates, you know, we need to watch. Because if we were to lose one plant out of this whole row, it's probably not going to be worth spraying a miticide, right? If we lost a lot of the hops here, but these can spread. And so it's important to keep an eye. Once it starts getting bad, 
check the pre-harvest interval on the miticides that you have. So if you have one, you can use a seven day pre-harvest interval. And so you're 14 days away from harvesting. In 14 days of dry weather, you can get a very bad mite issue. So it may be important to go ahead and get one out so that, you know, say you're five days from harvest and now you have just mites so bad that in the next five days, you may lose a lot of yield. You wanna make sure you, you do something with that issue before that time. So it's good to keep an eye on these mites. Right now we have it really just in these couple of plants. But that tells me that we're really close to having a larger issue. And so it might be time to even spot spray some of these mice um, to try to get cold in this, just this one spot. We've talked some about beneficial insects. They can help keep your harps or hops yard protected from some other pestiferous species. And earlier I showed some yellow striped army worms and why maybe you wanted to choose something like BT or a softer chemical than spraying something like a you know, a pyrethroid like Mustang Max or Zeta Cypromethan, which would be called. So here actually is a great example of that. And so what we have here is a yellow striped army worm that is actually being killed by a spine soldier bug nymph. So you can see the spine soldier bug there. He has actually killed this yellow striped army worm. Um, looks to be at like a third or fourth instar before it's going to do most of its damage. Um, this spine soldier bug, a uh, predator, um, so nymph meaning that it's an immature well, probably would have died if you had sprayed any kind of pesticide that's broad spectrum like a carbaryl which would be seven or a uh, zanotypermethrin which would be mustang max or any kind of bifenthrin or things like that which is a, a good job of killing our pest species but also killing a lot of uh, our beneficials As you can see here there's a lot of damage that's occurred to this plant because it did have a lot of yellow striped army worms on it but these beneficials will act in unison with the BT or some of the uh, lighter products to control. And so even though we've got a good bit of feeding on this plant, um, we actually were able to keep them pretty uh, relatively controlled on most of our plants and keep these populations from moving over into other plants when they got older. Mm -hmm.